Okay, so we just uh, had a shot of um, pruning, not weeding, pruning a plant. And what's the significance of that? Shouldn't be any except it's illegal by the uh, lack of wisdom of the so-called authorities on the subject. So we're going to talk some more about evidence looking with your own eyes and you can hear with your own ears from a bard Bart in this case with poems and stories allegories to back up what's said website bardbart.com okay and that has a link to YouTube enough of right there at home with a poet that's on YouTube so here we go uh, responding to a priest at EWTN, a Catholic, Roman Catholic uh, network coming out of uh, some part of Alabama there. All right, interesting story in itself. This priest, Father Mitch Pacwa, SJ, okay, in his homily yesterday said that he did some research after seeing what happened in Aurora, you know, at the uh, theater there, movie theater, the mass murder. And he found that uh, going back to the late 1800s and coming up to the 1960s, you had one every so often, but since the 1960s, because of sex, drugs, rock and roll, and the so-called revolution, that mass murders like this have increased dramatically, okay? And so it's easy to attribute what it is. So it was a horror story. There was nothing good to say about any of that change, nothing good to say about a church that has been silenced and priests like him committing the error of omission. Because yesterday as well, there was a Monsignor Len who was convicted for covering up for abuser priests, pedophiles. Now, silence on that. So I sent this Father Mitch Pacwa, you know, uh, a tweet saying, hey, hey, wrong, okay? And then I sent him another one with a link to a video done here last time. These same plants growing, little gardening going on. Gardening, but you know, there's that serpent in the garden story, the old evil, the lies, that's what that it's all about the lies and deceit that go on. The Pope wants to unmask lies and deceit about drugs. You gotta educate yourself first, buddy. And so do you, priest Mitch Pacwa. All right, your sound is ignorant as that old guy Bill O'Donoghue who is out there blustering and... Oh yeah, we'll give a poem for you right now, okay? About authoritarianism, because we never hear you talk about cheap labor, the main driver behind abortion. All right, idolatrous love of money. Love of money is the root of all evil. Idolatrous love of capital. Golden calf capitalism, not being condemned, actually glorified in. We have social conservatism, you see. Oh, women's issues, abortion, right? Compare that to child fucking priests. Pales, okay? So back off, motherfuckers. You need to repent and reform. All right, here's a poem. Get a life. Dancing around the idiocy of folks who take themselves too seriously. Whining with blustery authority. Get a job, a real one got one already. Help him to end wage slavery with intellectual peasantry. Traveling with good Samaritan stories and poetry. Okay, so the good Samaritan story. Let's be neighborly. All right, what is good? A good neighbor. Doesn't matter what your background or behavior is. Are you given a helping hand? Or are you hurt enough? You can't lend a helping hand. Don't lend any hand at all. That's the essence of the value system. Okay? 
if only we lived, that value system, but we don't. Even, the, you know, the best, you can only bat in the 300s. Ain't none of us batting in the thousands. All right. So here we go. For that priest, here's a story told by a poet in the part of the world I came from by the name of Paddy Drury. And this is going back now to the uh, early 1900s. Peasant island, poor peasants, landlordism, same as landlordism anywhere, that human perversity, and you had the institutions of the church and state institutions, okay? And it would serve the authorities, not that the state and church were there to serve the people, which is what the message of Christ was, is, and always will be. All right, folks, get that straight. So, here was this guy, and he didn't go to church, and he was one of only two people in the whole of that parish who didn't go, and the other was a Protestant man, and he didn't go to his church. And I tell you, that was something in those days. Outsiders, all right? But Patty, he was a poet. And he could come up with the words when the occasion wanted. And there was a, what was called a mission. There would be a religious retreat. The whole village, you know, the priest would come in. You had a Mutt and Jeff combination. You had heaven and hell. James Joyce describes that perfectly in a portrait of the artist as a young man. And that kind of scene. So anyway, uh, what happened with uh, all of that was that Patty, a farm laborer, back those hard work, no rights, no days off, seven days a week, you know, sunshine, sun up to sundown. And uh, he was working in a farmer's house, and the woman was genuinely pious in her faith tradition right there, which is Roman Catholic in this part right here. And so these folks came into town, the missionaries, and to convert, you know, for a renewal, actually, what they call today in the village, right? And you had it all going good where it would lead up to confession the last night. People would be cleansing their souls, have their souls cleansed, and then reconciliation and peace. And the spirit of all that working right there. So this woman, she was telling Patty what was going on with it every morning at breakfast, you know, when he, before he went out milking the cows and so on and so forth and praying and hoping she'd see him there. Well, lo and behold, wouldn't you know, the very last night of the mission, didn't she look across, and to her amazement, she saw Patty there. So anyway, grand, following morning at breakfast, she couldn't wait to ask him what he thought of it. So she waited till Patty had his breakfast, and he was having the finishing off his tea before he went out doing his work. And she said, well, tell me, Patty, and what did you think of our two good holy fathers last night? Well, Mrs. said, Patty, I only had half a day schooling, but if I had the other half, I'd beat the two from blind. And that's the way it is, with our brother Mitch Pacwa and his association, okay, of a good old white boy who associates mass murder in a certain form and can tailor the ends right to his means. Tailor the means to his ends. Pardon me. Okay? I mean, that is a schoolboy association. That's a Bill Donahue association. As a scholar? Oh my God. Get out of here. All right, go and do some homework. So, anyway, there's that story for the uh, ignorance in the uh, authoritarianism of the church, the priests. I mean, homeboys are ignorant as hell. They're talking about religious freedom. They're being persecuted, but they got no problem turning around and persecuting somebody else. The last poem, Religious Experience, got that. So we got that. And uh, here's the Patty story. We have another one for that later on. But right now, we're going to kick you with a poem. Okay? The word made yes. Conceived in the heart of Mary. Buddha of Buddha-ness. To say impossible is to put limits on unlimitedness. 
steady resistance with all her might. She said yes, in scared delight. Something to long for. There you are now. So, going to uh, inspiration. What helps? You guys, you were trying to stop Leonardo da Vinci from me. You wouldn't even give him some bloody beer while he was painting the Last Supper. You haven't learned the stuff of him telling. Oh, that's the constant recurrence of all phenomena. And this is our version of it. Fair enough. Well, homeboy out this here. Inspiration works this way. They know that all the time. If there's the folks with theirs, their poetry, and bring it on. Alrighty. Gonna be a bit of breeze here now, so I'm gonna have to try and so I to, you know, close out with a toke because you saw the opening plant and this is from that roll from that opening plant. So we have intelligence, we have the wholeness of the moment, okay? We have the gift from uh, Mother Mary, Mother uh, of Nature, right? Come on, folks, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, you're in the uh, church and you're talking and you're so far out of touch, you're persecuting her children, the poor people, on the words of ignorant authoritarians. God help us. You're as ignorant now as siding as those folks who sided with the owners of the plantation. All right, but everybody's got to wake up and stop cooperating in their own oppression and vote out these dumbass Jim Crow criminal drug laws. In effect, that's what they are. And they're plantation laws. So. Smoke one of these before I come out of here. A couple of tokes on this. This little bottle right here. Go in and drink my water. Do some tweeting, editing, all by the grace. Okay. So now, folks, is this a bard? Stories and poetry. Inspiration. Bill of Rights, right to privacy, okay, right to conscience, barbarians put people like me in jail. And now we have the authorities with the stamp of approval like people like the Pope himself and our buddy Mitch there, okay, and the Obama man, yep, taking away our rights. Not a word about that. No, sir. Blind obedience to the state because we're fighting terrorists. That's why this government has to take away our rights, because just in case the terrorists might succeed in doing it. So isn't it nice of the government to do it for them and save us all that trouble, you know? That's authoritarianism. We know what's best for you folks. Delusional. These folks are delusional. Words have meaning, and that's right, buddy. You're about to find out. Charlatans find out, saying one thing and doing the other, hypocrisy applies to all. Having titles don't mean shit when it comes to the word. Okay, nope, you got the picture. Bart, Bart, out, more later, all by the grace. Shamrock, the peasant language, God's goodness, God's grace, God's mercy. There's a shamrock for you. Later.